All right, what is up, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of the Counter Culture Podcast. We are here live at the Rogue Invitational with Gabe from Paper Street Coffee. What's going on? What's up, dude? How are you? Uh, hot. It's hot. Extremely hot. It's sweaty. <laughs> we've had a we've had a morning. I think you had a couple days too, like a couple stressful days. Yeah. Uh, got in yesterday morning. Uh, woke up at six. Came down from Jersey. Uh, just set up the rain, kind of put a little damper on everything. But uh, it's it's really cool. Like there's so many people here. My first year at uh, Rogue with Paper Street Coffee. So oh, this is your first year? I thought you were here last year. No, I just saw you at the games then. Yeah, we just went at the games. Uh, so 2022 was kind of like the first year that we like hit the ground running when it came to like CrossFit and like you know uh, functional fitness, health and fitness, and all that sure. stuff. Uh, and yeah, the games was our kind of like coming out party uh cool. it was really cool but i mean first time in austin and it's a uh, really really cool to see the community here is this your first time in austin in general first time in there's a frenchie right there i love frenchies uh it's the first time in texas so yeah oh shit austin's dope did you get a chance to like go around town uh so yesterday we uh went to uh, the comedy mothership yeah uh, oh and, uh, was it sick it, well that's rogan's place yeah yes okay well the issue with that was our uh my uh pretty much my my ceo the person that runs the company over there paulina in the back yeah yeah shout out she uh was supposed to get tickets for all of us we have eight people staying <laughs> anyway stuff happens she only got four tickets oh no so i had to bite the bullet i didn't have to i, I wanted to bite the bullet just so you know let everyone else that's here helping me out go have fun and uh, the boss, they, they had an amazing time and I'm, I'm happy that they had an amazing time heck yeah dude. so i just stayed back home and just chilled with uh, roderick me for time i just chilled with him at, at the house i mean it was probably nice after unloading and stuff to just get to chill anyway right yeah, yeah yeah i mean uh like i said it's it's i'm one of those people that i also enjoy other people having fun and knowing yeah. that like the people close to me that are gonna be like sweating with me helping me out this weekend like yeah. knowing that they were able to have like an awesome time i'm equally as excited and happy for them so i'm like yeah oh yeah man sweet chilling sweet dude well i waited a second to uh take a sip of this frost the hey. paper street coffee nitro yes sir yes sir. live on camera i've had it before but it gets me every time <laughs> taste test Mm, that shit's good. That shit's good. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, man, I appreciate it. I appreciate it. Um, okay, so, yo, how how do you get into making CrossFit's best tasting coffee? Oh man, I mean, you said that, not me. Uh, <laughs> it, it, I you just uh, you you just aim to wait, just Gabe. Make I'm good sorry. Coffee. I'm sorry. I have to do an interrupt of the show real quick. I forgot to give you my your flowers, dude. Every episode, in the beginning of the episode, I give the guests their flowers. I so just it. pay you a compliment. And uh, that's basically your compliment, is that I think that you have the best coffee in CrossFit. I appreciate it, man. Yeah, uh, man. I, I guess I work, we all work hard to make sure that it's a good quality product. And again, if you just aim to make a good a good product, yeah. uh, you know, it, we'll just stand out. Uh, yeah. it, is what we, it is what it is. Uh, you know, what you're drinking right there, it's just like... A year of like trials and like making sure that it tastes really really good mm -hmm. um, and you hear a lot of people saying you know it's not about the product it's about like the marketing whatever it is I'm like no you're like your product is good and if it's yeah. good like everything else will follow yeah yeah. Uh, I'm not like you know the business guru or like marketing genius but you know I, I think I'm doing a good job with focusing on a really good quality product and building the business around it well because then people talk right and they're like, this product is amazing. You got to try it. And it just spreads like wildfire as opposed to the people that are just so focused on branding and social media or whatever. Their product could be absolute shit and they might do really good sales like short term, but then long term, where are they at? Right? Yeah. I mean, uh, I, that's my background. Uh, I'm an econ major. Okay. Uh, you know, I've been I've been in businesses since like I, I got out of college. I, one of the first businesses I started was a or I was in was a startup and they ended up selling for hundreds of millions of dollars and I wow. was like their third, fourth employee. Uh, so I'm used to kind of like starting from like very, very, very ground to like exploding. Yeah. Um, and it's something that I guess has really helped me out, especially with my, this is like the first business I've had that uh, I've ever done by myself. Everything okay. else has been with partners. Uh, I had two gyms prior to this. Wow. Uh, one of them was with partners. Okay. Find yourself good partners if you're going to start a business with gyms. Find yourself good partners. Yeah. If not, um, and like I, I, I'll take full responsibility and blame why yep. why it didn't go go well. Uh, I was young, irresponsible. Then I transitioned to opening up a gym by myself, and mm. it was a lot on my shoulders. Yeah. Uh, 
and then I, you know, uh, I actually was able to lease that gym out uh, right before COVID. Okay. And then uh, I like, had like you saw COVID come in, or like you just did it by, no, by chance? Just chance. Wow, uh, November okay. November uh, 2019, I just leased that out to uh, one of my coaches. Okay. And uh, by you know February March, all that stuff happened. Yeah, that's yeah. crazy, dude. Yeah. Kind of luck, huh? Well, it was one of those things where I had something like uh, I had another business that I started that uh, kind of fell through, and that took a lot, uh, like a lot of emotion, like from me. It just emotionally drained me, so I was just uh, the business prior to the gym. Uh, I, I started another business uh, during having this other gym. Oh, okay, um, but that other business, you know, a lot of personal things happened. Uh, uh, what was that business? I owned a bar, so I owned. Oh, a, yeah, yeah. Nice. I, I I owned a bar with another partner, and again be cautious dude partners are rough man i just lost i so i own a gym and i just lost both of my partners this year on like we haven't even the gym hasn't been officially open for more than two years oh damn lost both of them which is all right i, I like that you took like accountability for like the stuff that happened with your partner too because i tend to do that often too where it's like i'll take accountability for the fact that i chose to go into business with them so like it's on me at the end of the day yeah you know so yeah so you owned a bar, you had it with another partner? Yeah, and then just, just stuff just went through. Uh, stuff happens and it just took a lot out of me emotionally. And uh, I was speaking to uh, one of my members who was a really, really good intellectual guy and uh, emotionally like intelligent. Uh, and he just like sat down and was like, hey Gabe, like it's okay just to like reap in the benefits of your hard work. Yeah. So I said, all right, you know what? I'm gonna take, I'm gonna not be a business owner anymore. November okay. 2019 and then April no uh, April 2020 a yeah. few months later I was like you know what how about I start another business and <laughs> April 2020 during the middle of pandemic was when I got the idea of starting Paper Street Coffee so you worked for a, a business right out of college yeah how old are you I am I just turned two days ago how old am I 34 damn happy late birthday dude Appreciate that's awesome it. yeah Appreciate yeah absolutely it. um what was that business that you went and got a job for? Uh, it was an e-cigarette company. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that was uh, in 2012. Uh, it was literally one of the one of the first ones. Uh, they got really, really big. Uh, I decided not to work with them because they were relocating to Florida. Sure. And like any stupid young kid, decided to stay in New Jersey for a girl and not. Oh you know. no. Uh, but it was the right. right. It's yeah. the right decision because at the end yeah. of the day, we're here. Sure. You know, yeah. so I, I can't be you know regretting. I, no. I love the fact that I, I I didn't go down and I'm I'm here and and, and doing my thing. So. So right after that, it, like when you transition out of that job, that's when you get into the entrepreneurial side? Or did you always have like an entrepreneurial spirit since you were a kid? Well, I mean, as dumb as it sounds, and it is what it is, right? Like that immigrant mindset. My parents are, are both immigrants. I'm first generation here in the, in the U.S. Uh, my, well, my father's Puerto Rican, so okay. not that immigrant. And then my mother's Ecuadorian. Cool. Uh, so Hispanic. Yeah. Uh, you know, they've had businesses. So it was one of those things where uh, I had, I, I used to work for an investment company, uh, I interned during college. Okay. And one of my bosses, my mentors, right? So we do like fixed income, which is like bonds, a bunch of like mutual funds, very, very boring stuff, uh, but lucrative. Yeah. Not gonna lie. Super. Uh, he was my mentor again. Boss was like going through a divorce, and it was one of those things where he sat me down right where I was about to graduate, and they were gonna offer me a position. Yeah. And he knew I was into health and fitness. Okay. Uh, and he said, hey, man, is this something that you really, really want to do? Like, this job cost me my marriage, and he's going to still stay there, right? Um, and I was just like, you know what? Uh, I appreciate that, and yeah. I think I'm going to leave the sector. Yeah. The second that he said that, the very next day I was gone. What uh, was it about? Like, was it just the hours and the stress? I was, like, first one in, like, 5 o'clock in the morning, uh, last one out, literally okay. 6, 7 o'clock at night. So it was wow. just, like, there was no alone time and when you're there like at, at seven you take the train from the city back home and like you get home at eight and it's like i wanted to work out this is i knew a little bit about crossfit during 2012 sure but i wasn't really fully like in in it right uh and he knew like it wasn't gonna be something that i wanted to do full term it was just yeah. gonna destroy like my life just as it did his yep. so i appreciated that uh and i just left and so it was like the trade-off of money wasn't worth everything else for you I mean, for so some people, yeah, it is. Yeah. But for me personally, like I, I want to be happy doing what I 
what I'm doing. Yeah. And I know that 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 wouldn't that wouldn't have made me happy. I mean, I loved working, waking up super early, going mm -hmm. grinding, like doing reports and stuff like that because it's just work. I love working. You know, yeah. I love sweating. I love being the person that's doing stuff. Yeah. Uh, uh, even now, like even now that I do have awesome people that uh, help me with my business, I always make sure that people always see me at events, just like yeah. working, giving out coffee. And even if I'm if I'm not working, which a lot of the, my team, they're like, hey, Gabe, just like go talk to people. Yeah. Uh, and I appreciate that because I, I, I really, you know, you're so tunnel vision, so focused sometimes that you forget like people want to have this conversation. People right. may, maybe have questions uh, that like we can do a podcast and I can answer some questions about sure. uh, whether it's the space or about business or whatever they're, you know, whatever they're asking. Yeah. Well, it seems like you're super purpose driven. That's why like, like you, you work like hard and often. I feel like when, when you have a purpose and when you really enjoy it, the work almost doesn't seem like work, right? Because you're saying that you enjoy it. And I feel the same way when I'm like really deep into some shit. I'm like, it doesn't even feel like I'm working. You know what I mean? Like I'm having fun doing it. Um, I mean, yeah, I, it's, it's one of those dumb things, right? Where they're like, you know, find something that you love and you really won't be working. Mm -hmm. But in reality, it's just when I, like you put, you keep your head down yeah, and you just like grind it out. I've had so many bouts of luck that have helped me kind of catapult my my business yeah. um, to where it is, whether it's like partnering with the right athletes, partnering with the right brand, uh, sitting down and having a conversation with the right people and hiring and, and, and letting the right people help me. Yeah. Um, I don't like to look at people that help me as employees because they're not like they're just taking a burden off my off my shoulders. Right. And I'm extremely grateful yeah. um, for every single person that I interact with uh, that helps me with the business or helps me with just life stuff in general. Yeah. Uh, and yeah, like, am I purpose driven? I, th I think, I think just like, uh, like I love chaos. Like I, I yeah. thrive in <laughs> the chaos of, of trying to succeed. Sure. Um, Where do you think that comes from? CrossFit. CrossFit. Yeah. Yeah. I, I thrive in the failure. Okay. Right? I, yeah. I, I, I've said this before to many people, but like, whenever you're going for let's say a three fifteen back squat, right? For sure. You have to fail so many times. Yeah. To get to that three fifteen. Yep. And then the second you get 315, yeah. you're like, shit, 320's down. Like, there it is. It's gone. Yeah. Like, you had this goal. Like, 405 might have been the goal for, let's say, two, three years. Mm -hmm. And you're thriving and you're failing day after day, week after week, trying to get to that number. Yeah. And once you hit that 405, that 405 is gone in an instant. The second yeah. that you hit it, right. your brain automatically, so, or at least it does for me. You're like, yep. buy 405, 410. Yeah. 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 And it's one of those things where it's it's the failure. It's 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 being in the community that we're in. It's yeah. it's we fail so much and without noticing, right? Yeah, like for sure. without noticing we just fail mm -hmm. so much, but it's that failure that keeps pushing you forward, right? The failure of like, all right, cool, like maybe I got to do some lunges, maybe I got to do some hip work, maybe I got to do something else to help me hit that number. Yeah. Um and and that's why I don't think I'd be where I am right now business-wise if it wasn't for CrossFit, 100%. So, but where does that, like, for you, where does that come from where, like, you hit... So, so many people, when they fail at something, they just be like, fuck it, dude, I don't want to try it again. Do you think it is just that mindset of... Because I'll tell you, from my own experience, CrossFit's taught me a lot of things about myself that I would have not known otherwise. And I just started, like, two years ago, and I... I I fancy myself like uh, I've been through a lot of adversity in life. So like a part of my mindset comes from overcoming like traumas or like if some, you know, I would, grew up super, super poor. Right. And like overcoming that and finding some sort of financial security and all that stuff. But that's where I get this from. Where do you get the if I fail, I'm going to fucking try it again. I'm not going to let this get me. Uh, I mean, luckily, I, th I think we've ha we have a similar background, not really knowing much about it. Uh, and like. During college, uh, we, we were like on, on, my family was like on food stamps and stuff like that. Yeah. So like, I remember having to like look for pennies like in around the house for, so I can have enough money to buy a pass to go to, to school, yeah. right? I buy a train pass to go to school. And I remember my mom working really, really hard. My father working equally as hard. Um, and then it's one of those things where it's like, if they're busting their ass to try to help me succeed yeah uh like it's just it's just your environment right i see that right. i don't see them like slacking off and being like ah no you know what we don't have the you know 12 dollars it was to get me down down for the monthly pass or the weekly pass to school sure it's like no they figured out a way they like searched they was like we broke piggy banks so many times um just to have the opportunity for 
me to succeed. Yeah. And like I see that, and also the people you surround yourself with. Uh, right. Uh, uh, it's also like you said you just started you started two years ago did you start at, at a box or like i think like three years ago but i uh so yeah yeah yeah. i started at a box and then i quickly left the box because i wanted to go to the games right away so i hired an online coach it's like that dream that every crossfitter has they yeah. like start it they're like holy shit i love this i'm going to the games you know but uh <laughs> it's, that hasn't happened yet you know but yeah so i started in a box yeah so it's it's also the community, right? It's yeah. like the people around you. Like if you have the right the right people, like if you're about to hit your one rep back, back squat and you're hyping me up and I don't hit it, but you're still hyping me up and like after I don't hit it, you're not gonna be like you're a bum, right? Right? What are you gonna do? You're gonna help me and lift me up and give me words of encouragement. Yeah, hundred percent. The second that I feel down and I hear that from you, I'm like, ah oh, shit. You know what? Like there is always gonna be a next time. So it's also that community aspect. So yeah. it's one of those things where uh, you don't. In my opinion, you don't build an empire by yourself, right? You don't build something successful by yourself. As yeah. much as an individual gets the credit, and like I might, like some people might look at this and be like, "No, like this guy is completely off." I'm like, "No, I'm gonna give people their due. Like I'm gonna give my team and anyone that's helped me get to where I am. Like I'm gonna give them all the props in the world." Yeah. Um, and I think, not again, like my team in the beginning was my family, and then the people I surround myself with. So it's really easy when you fail, yeah. and you have people being like. Yo, it's all good. Yeah. It's really, really easy for you to like completely wipe that failure away and use for it sure. as motivation rather than something that just keeps you like, oh man, I don't even want to squat anymore. Yeah. Or like, you know, how long did it take for you to get like your first muscle up, right? And then after yeah. that, you're like, shit, one's down. Yeah. Now I got to go for two. <laughs> yeah. So it's one of those things where, again, it's like we're, we're, we're in a really cool community and environment where uh, like failure is just part of life. Failure is just the next step to, to progress. And everybody understands it. And can oh, relate yeah. to it, yeah, 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 one hundred percent. Whether it's whether it's ninety five a ninety five pound back squat or a four hundred five pound back squat, like everyone knows that 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 intensity and knows the feeling of like, shit, I got it or shit, I failed. Yeah, um, and it's just who you surround yourself with. So I, I, it's super cool to be able to uh, to have conversations like this where you can reach people that might not be feeling the same way that might be like letting failure be like uh maybe i i'm i'm going down the wrong path yeah um for whatever reason i've never i've that's never like crossed my head it's never occurred to you yeah, yeah. i don't know why i just you know, like keep keep grinding it out it'll, ha it, yeah. it'll work itself out hell yeah dude come on in dude give us a little interrupt <laughs> hey we got roderick meme for time here hi hello beautiful weather we're having <laughs> oh my god if you guys can't tell, I'm like sweating profusely. <laughs> Dude, me too. Under this shirt, like, gl good thing it's black and white because if oh, it, <laughs> yeah. it would be, huh? No. Thank you. Did you, say, did you say food? Food, yeah, he said food. <laughs> I, didn't hear, I didn't hear what he said at all. Good dude. Um, yeah, he's a great dude. He's a uh, dude. I was super thankful for him. And like, speaking of the community, right? It just seems like most people in this community are just fucking down for you, no matter what, right? Like. I've only met, I met Roderick one other time because I worked with Fit Aid for a long time and I DM'd him before you guys came to the games. I was like, yo, I just started this podcast. I don't know if you remember me. Would you be down to be on it? And he said, yeah, dude, I was fucking nervous as hell to do it. It was like my second podcast ever, third, third podcast. And uh, yeah, it was just cool. He was super supportive right away. Like everybody seems to be that way, you know? Everybody's trying things and it's just nice to see that, you know? And uh, again, it's, it's really cool, like the the like the spirit of the crossfit it's it's heartbeat it's the community right yeah. it's not like the the metrics behind what makes uh it's successful yeah right like you can't really measure community no. that much right like who how, you you can't it's it, it's impossible and it's one of those things that uh like you said right like we're all here to like lift each other like same thing with him i met him at not this year's games the games last year and uh it was one of those things where uh we decided to go to the games, not really knowing what could happen. We we partnered with with the Sevon podcast. That's so sick. Um, back in uh, April 2022. Yeah. And uh, I appreciate that man more than like I can even put into words. Uh, what he's done for me personally and yeah. for my business goes so like it's it, it's uh, like he is one of the greatest people I've ever had the pleasure to meet you know how like they say like don't meet your idols because sometimes they'll like fail you yeah or they yeah. won't live up to that expectation like this man has just gone above and beyond and everyone around him yeah um, I've had the pleasure to meet a lot a lot of awesome people because of 
the connection I've had with him. Yeah. And it's one of those things where I, when I get a phone call for him or when I text him or when he replies or when we talk, it's like one of those things where I'm like, dude, I, he says thank you for, for supporting him. I'm like, dude, I, you've given me so much. Like, you've given me this platform. When yeah. we went to the games in 22, uh, I went there scared shitless. Yeah. Like, it was a huge investment. I actually remember you being there the first year. Dog, yeah. I was scared. I was nervous. I was anxious. I was like sw- like sweating even more than now <laughs> because I had no idea what the reception was and I asked sure. him like hey man like what if I go to the games yeah like would you support like would you just let people know he was like yeah of course and then the outpour of the community uh I, I when I got there I my fiance she didn't come with me right off the bat mm-hmm. she uh she had to do do something for school so like Thursday that I was there I was just like having quick conversations like all right because cool, yeah. I didn't I, I really didn't understand like people wanted to talk to me like obviously this yeah this crap. yeah dude uh and she when she comes on Friday like an hour into us opening she pulls me aside and she goes hey slow down we're here the people that were there we're here to help you just go talk to everyone like everyone is genuine and wants to have a conversation with you yeah just go talk to them and be you and just just don't worry about being quick 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 right. quick. like they want to have a genuine conversation and i was like are you sure you know like that, that little imposter imposter syndrome comes yeah. up mm-hmm. uh, and i'm like no no no, i'm good i'm i'm, I'm str- like i'm i'm fine like they don't want to talk to me but they did yeah absolutely um and that kind of put me into like a different perspective where it's like ah shit like the community is there for you yeah so then after that we just kept going like we went to Wadapalooza, we killed it at Wadapalooza. it's one of the most awesome things then we went to semis and then we kept on just growing 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 getting to 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 where we are now and and like i said man i I, if it wasn't for him to like start the spark Mm -hmm. and help me get my name out there as far as paper sheet goes i wouldn't be you know where 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 i am dude he seems like a really cool dude and just like is super um okay with putting other people on i mean words like there's no words like i can try to put it into words and perspective yeah uh but i just i i can't how did you like initially get in contact with savan i mean it's it's uh, it's one of those things where i had a personal issue uh my my fiance's uh sister was having a bout with cancer uh and he posted a book uh cancer as a metabolic disease this is really important like super important uh because uh dr thomas seyfried uh his book is life-changing uh, that's the author of the book you were just yes, talking about? Yes, uh, Cancer as a Metabolic Disease, Dr. Uh, Thomas Seyfried. If you have anyone that's going through cancer, please like read out, re- read the book, see if you could reach out to him. Uh, he will, like, you, you could put it asterisk, whatever, he'll save that person's life. Just Is your sister's uh, what? My, uh, my fiance's fiance sister, fiance sister good? Yeah. Uh, no, she uh, sadly passed away. Oh, sorry to hear that. Uh, no, it's okay. Uh, and, and, and I reached out to him because he posted that one, one day when he was, I think he was still working for, for CrossFit. And I reached out to him on a DM and uh, he replied. And you know how, you know, back in the day on Instagram, when you send something to someone and they reply, the next yeah. time you send them another message, it'll go right to the top. So I don't remember that. No. So, yeah. So, like, if okay. you if, if you have, uh, you know, he had 100,000 plus followers. Yeah. So if you send him a message, it'll like be trickled down into like an ocean of people yeah. sending him messages. Okay. But he replied. So the next time I would send him a message, it went right. He was able to see it. Oh, sweet. Um, so, you know, sadly, she passed away. Um, and then I saw that he started his his own podcast after after he got fired from CrossFit. And uh, this was after she passed away. And I was like, you know what? I'm, let me reach out to him and just be like, hey, man, thank you so much for taking the time out that you did. He gave me a bunch of information. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I was like, hey, man, let me let, let me help you out. Like, let me let me make sure that uh, you you're not quote unquote silenced, right? Like maybe people like, let me give you the, the, the same like help you gave me when I was in a, such a dark time. Yeah. Not that he was in a dark time. Let me, let me do the same thing for you. And he was really good. Uh, really good friends with good dudes right there. Yeah. Josh Bridges. Um, and I messaged him and I was just like, Hey man, I know that you're really, really good friends with Josh. You, uh, drink good dudes, but, um, like I'm a coffee roaster. Um, yeah. I'm the person that like makes sure that the coffee tastes amazing. Yeah. And I shipped some out to him. And I said, even if you don't like it, let me just give you some money to make sure that your voice doesn't get silenced and we'll figure it out afterwards. That's and, cool of you, dude. And it just happened. It was one of those happenstance things where he saw the message. He said, go ahead. Uh, but I'm, you know, I- I'm Josh's boy. And I was like, All right, I don't I don't care. Yeah. Let's just let's just see what happens. And now fast forward, um, you know, we, we do uh, operations for good dudes as well. So I roast their coffee. I ship out Sweet. their coffee. So it's like one of those things where where uh, 
you know, he's opened so many doors. Um, and also my ability to, to not be like, uh, it's fucking so cliche. The rising tides lift all ships. It's true. Yeah. It's 100% true. Like I, I, I'm really, I have a really awesome relationship with Chris yeah. from Buffalo bro. Really cool gentleman also. Like, so it's not even a, a thing where it's not a no, competition. we're not, we're not competing. Like if, <laughs> yeah. if my stuff gets better, so does, so does theirs. Mm-hmm. If the next person's stuff gets better, so does theirs. Like, so it's, it's just like, Hey, if we can help each other, if we can push each other. It raises the like, bar, dude. That's fine. That's yeah. totally fine. Why? Because we're used to that competition. We're used to classes. Yeah. We're used yeah. to like going to throwdowns and stuff like that. Yeah. We're used to like losing, but also like, all right, cool. Like he, he you know, we both suffered together. So it's like, yeah. um, so it's one of those things. And and you could, I could always circle everything back to like CrossFit and all that stuff. Yeah. Uh, yeah. That's what I'm like. Yeah. Like, man, it's hard to say this because I say it so often, but there's enough for everyone to eat. You know what I mean? And people are just so competitive where they're like, well, if I'm trying to be in this space, fuck those guys. They need to go down. It's like, no, dude, prop each other up. Like the the healthy competition is good, right? So like if you're friends with the Buffalo Brew or the good dudes and you get a better product, like you were saying, it's just like in class when that person beats you. Now you want to get better to up the ante and you guys just push each other and people are going to try all the products anyway. So it's like, why not be in contact? Why not be friends? Yeah, it's 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 that open the the, the growth mindset, right? Yeah, exactly. Being being open to to uh, the abundance being op- mindset, exactly. Yeah. Being open to failure and then being open to understanding that like there's there's so much that you could do. And again, whether it's business, whether it's like just just even like personal relationships. Like for me, yeah. it's one of those things where, um, dude, I started the business. I started I started like my entrepreneur mindset when I was in my mid twenties, and now I'm almost in my mid thirties. Yeah, and I. I'm like, dude, no wonder like some of these businesses like were only three, four year businesses. Yeah. Because now at 34, I'm like, dude, I have so much that I can give yeah. my 25 year old, like so much experience, so much advice that I would be able to give my my 21, 25, 24 year old my uh, uh, Gabe. Yeah. I'm like, dude, I, I I'm so I'm so happy that. I went through all these things and I am where I am now. Yeah. Um, and I tried doing that like like Pauline again. I'll, I'll, I'll bring her up a bunch. She's really, really young, really good, uh, hard worker. Um, she tried to get uh, hired by Paper Street for like a long, long time. Yeah. Until one day, like I just saw, saw her at a, at, at a, uh, at an event in uh, Water, right? In uh, Well, she I first first saw her at Wadapalooza in mm-hmm. January. And then February, Greg, Greg Glassman had a broken science event that we went to in Austin mm. and sh- in, um, in Arizona. And she was just, she was just there by herself. She just flew in for like t- 12 hours. Oh, <laughs> nice. And she was just around a bunch of doctors and a bunch of like a bunch of, uh, awesome individuals. That's where I met, uh, the Dr. Thomas Hayfried from, uh, from, uh, cancer as a metabolic disease and a bunch of other, uh, awesome, awesome people, um, that are speaking out uh, about a bunch of issues that we have in science and Chronic uh, illnesses and stuff. And, yeah, it's yeah. just it, it, it. And she was just there, like as a twenty-year-old kid. And I. That's the, really the, cool. The second I saw her. Hey, babe. Babe. The second I saw her, I was just like. All right. You saw her. The second I saw her, just like be there. She came back up to me. I'm like, dude. Like, all right, cool. Like, I have your resume. She was also an econ major, so like, you know, that, that was awesome. And then. Uh, I was like, you're hired. Literally Monday, you're going to start working. For you me. just saw like the growth mindset in her? I and saw the were, hustle. Yeah. I saw the same hustle that I had. Cool. I yeah. was like, ah, oh, fuck. Like this is, this is, this is the same. This is what I need. Someone that yeah. work, work, outwork me. And yeah. she definitely outworks me. Like she, she should be the person running Paper Street Coffee. She <laughs> is. She, she's. She's that good, huh? Yeah. She's That's 100%. Cool. Oh, 100%. Yeah. Uh, I, yeah. Yeah. She's, I can, I can literally like leave right now and she'll be able to do everything. Everything. Um, and it's one of those things where, where again, it's like you just find like the right person and yeah. you, you build your team around it and you build your team around like awesome like-minded individuals. I've made mistakes also hiring the wrong people. Yeah. And it sucks. But at the same time, it's like you get, it makes you realize like there's some people like even like Roderick, right? Yeah. Like some people that are genuine and will help you out. And there's some people that just don't. And, and, and again, uh, Hey, that's what these conversations are for, right? Have you ever had like a terrible, terrible experience with somebody that you hired? Yes. Yeah. You want to talk about it? <laughs> they still work for me. No. Really? Yes. 
yeah, bro, in my oh. heart, I can't be firing people that easily. I gotta, I, I gotta give them a bunch of a bunch of chances. Yeah. that's gonna change, right? We don't gotta like, talk about it. Yeah, yeah but no, I mean, I'm, I don't, I don't care. I talk about anything. Yeah. Uh, but, but yeah, I mean, it's one of those things where, where, uh, I'm, you know, I, I'm gonna get to the point where I'm gonna not be able to. They're, they're not, they're gonna hold me back. Yeah, and I, I don't want to fire someone, but at the same time, I don't want to have to drag someone right well, everyone else like i lead from the front yeah but what's cool is sometimes like if i look back like one of my one of the people will just be like in front of me like i'll yeah. I, I have to work my ass off to lead from the front yeah because every person on my team is like running to to be the person like that's leading yeah. and that's awesome it, it's really cool well that's a testament to the type of culture that you're creating within your business and that's really good it's always the companies with the best culture that seem to like push forward the most yeah, I mean, uh, you, you know, you read the books, you hear all these things about, uh, you know, how you should you you should uh, kind of mimic your business and stuff like that. And for me, it's one of those things where, at the end of the day, like if you go, if I leave and you go, you know, Paulina comes here and she talks and and you ask her how does she like it, mm -hmm. I'm I'm confident that she's gonna be like I I, I love working here. Yeah, same absolutely. thing for for you know marketing manager, everyone else, just like. Is Gabe a good person? Yeah, he's a little cranky sometimes, but he's he's a good person. I'm super cranky. Yeah, uh, my fiance was definitely will tell well, that's you. That's why you made a coffee cranky. company, right? So you yeah. could not be cranky. Oh, well, dude, yeah. I'm uh, like, I, I, but but I love I love people. Like I love yeah. having interactions, just like random blowing kisses to random people, just saying hi to to random people. It's it, it's I like that. I like I'm a personal per like I, I love being around people. I'm an introvert, but I love seeing people happy like yeah. I'll, I'll go out to dinner and i'll make sure like hey i'll pay for everything just so we could all hang out and chop it up and just yeah oh yeah no one no one has to like have that pressure like i'll like scurry off to the bathroom give my credit card to the waiter and like yeah. I, I come back and when everyone's like all right cool where's the check i'm like no just go just like we're, we're, we're set or like i'll invite people like i remember in orlando we had like 15 people deep just going going out to eat because it was one of those things where i'm like you want to come all right come on like yeah let's just enjoy being here like we were talking about coming to Austin so long. Like there's eight people in our Airbnb and we all were just so excited to come to work. Yeah. Like when was the last time you were excited to come to work? Yeah, dude. I'm well for me, yeah. fortunately I have a bit, yeah. I own my own shit, but yeah, but no, I, I a hundred percent agree with you. And I feel, I feel really bad for people that don't get to ever experience that. Uh, so, I mean, you, you can't like you can't put yourself in everyone else's shoes yeah right and like you can't like i can't hire everyone right uh and it's just like you give there's so much opportunity yeah so much so much opportunity that i maybe you could be a little bit cynical but sometimes you need those people that yeah. just like hate their jobs yeah i guess feeling bad isn't quite what i mean like because i think everybody has the ability to feel that way but it's just i i kind of feel bad for the people who just like the ones who feel stuck, like they, yeah. the ones who feel like they couldn't do it because they're just so risk adverse that they would never even take the chance to like try something, you know, yeah. my whole life for me, the problem, it seems like for you, I've been like risk forward, like, oh, the, like, I don't know what's going to be on the other side of that wall. Fuck it. I'm jumping over the wall. I just want to see. Yeah. Cause you know, they're the background yeah. of how you grew up. Yeah, right? exactly. So, so, so there, was, we, there was, I'm assuming, right. There's always like that turmoil. There's always like been that, 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 that chaos. Right. And, yeah. and, and it's like you. If you're if you're comfortable with just like everything being quiet and everything yeah. being like chill, like yeah. the second that shit hits the fan, you're gonna be like, oh, what am I supposed <laughs> to do? Fuck, fuck, fuck. But yeah. if shit's hitting the fan all yeah. the time and you're yeah. in a high stress environment, you're like, all right, cool. This is where I like, I'll like just chill. Yeah. Like, this is my this is my this is my jam. This is where I like I rock out. Yeah, and dude. That's dude. That that that's a superpower. So when you said that um, in the beginning that you're like you thrive in chaos, I was like. Holy shit! He just said the exact thing that I say to my girlfriend all the time. Like, there we I go. Thrive in chaos. I'm like, I love it. Like when things hit, when when shit hits the fan, it sucks sometimes. Like when it really hits the fan, like when there's problems, it sucks. But at the same time, I'm like, another problem to solve. Now, now we have something to do. Now we're not like fucking sitting on our ass, like trying to figure out what to do. We have something. It just gives me like uh, that drive forward. But uh, dude, I wanted to ask you. Uh, on Savan again I don't want to make this about him he they try to shut him down so much dude what's it like being a brand that's associated with somebody who's like constantly on the fucking cancel list uh I mean I, I it, it's I'm assuming you're not very PC or you're not like PC like 
for. Oh no, oh no. I mean, I'm, I'm, I here. Like, I res, I, dude. I respect everyone. Yeah, right? yeah. Like, there's absolutely. no. Here, like, fun story. I went to Seattle two weeks ago, and everyone like talked shit about Seattle. Yes, there was homely. Yes, there were a bunch of people doing drugs. But like, I'm a coffee. I, we're about to open our coffee shop, and in Jersey, in New York, you go to a coffee shop, and it's it almost feels like when I order my coffee, I'm bothering the barista. I'm uh. bothering the cashier. I went to Seattle. Every single coffee shop I went to, they greeted me. They were like, "Hey, like, awesome people." Like. We went during the, the 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 solar eclipse and like the hope. It was we, we just saw a bunch of people looking up and like we had no idea there was trees. It was beautiful scenery. Some random lady on the bike just like we stopped her. We were in a car and like in New York, mm-hmm. in Jersey, if you like, if some guys from a car are like, hey, what's going on? Like <laughs> that lady, you. yeah, like, yeah, <laughs> yeah exactly. Yeah. Fuck you. What the fuck? And she'll yeah. just go. And she yeah. stopped. She was like, oh, there's a lunar eclipse. Pulls out fucking those those lunar eclipse, the solar eclipse glasses. He's like, you want to see? No way. And we were just at a stop sign. We stopped. We parked. We got out. And she's like, yeah, I've been driving around all day asking if people just want to look at the eclipse. Oh, that's sick. And it's one of those things where it's like, oh, dude, like. There's good people. There's people. There's, there's awesome people everywhere. Now, yeah. um, it, there's, I don't. So what I, what I do, especially now getting into my athletes, right? Yeah. It's like uh, you have to find a balance, right? Yeah. I'm going to use right and left because I, I, I can use black and white. I can use whatever terminologies. Uh, but you have to balance an extreme right with an extreme left, right? Yeah, so I have seven, which is which is like we, we have that such strong, awesome community. And, and, and I have to partner with with, with athletes that, that exemplify something else as well, right? Yeah. So that's why I have Ariel Lowen. Uh, she was my very first athlete. I have Colton Mertens, which is like a really strong uh, you know, powerful. Farm boy. Yeah, exactly, and, and strong and powerful. Not in the sense of like actual physical, uh, yeah. but just like mental and being able to wake up at four o'clock in the morning, yeah. grinding out. Uh, he just texted me like, he knows we're coming to Rogue. He texted me. He's like, hey, you know, hope everything is well. Like, yeah, that, that's those are my athletes. Dude, uh, his YouTube channel, by the way. Uh, do you watch it? Hell yeah, dude. We just we just found him. It's so wholesome. It's the we just watched his video last night, like before going to bed. It's so fucking good, dog. Like it's it's a. Uh, the the low production because he's using his iphone and like how just like personal it is like getting to see him as an no one else does this i've been saying this for a while in the cross space it's like everybody's not not that this is bad because they need money but everybody's concerned with like just ads putting on a show or whatever but colton it's like he has a brand like his personality like his personality is his brand so you get to see him and take it for what it is dude you know it's great. I mean, he's he's awesome. He, he, like incorporating his dogs and and all that stuff. It's, <laughs> yes, it's beautiful. It's, it's, dog? it's uh, dude. I I, yeah. I love him. One of the really most most cool and genuine people. Last uh, not not this past games. The other one, the prior one, my first games. He just came to the booth like yeah. out of nowhere when everyone was gone on a Thursday, right? They they competed that Thursday, uh, and he just stopped by. Like it was one of the things where he stopped by, Andrew stopped by, and a bunch of people like stopped by after the vendor village was closed. And I was like, I like took a step back. I was like, oh, dude, like that's really really cool. Yeah. But like yeah, like so so like it, it's it, it's one of those things where I feel bad sometimes where they 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 say things about Savon or even Hitler, right? Which I'm, I'm, I'm uh, I'd like to say like, we're a little Good bit boys. more than acquaintances. Yeah. Um, where I ask them like, have you had any interaction with them? Yeah. Or like, if 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 like, what what's your what's your perspective of me? Do you, what do you think of me? Do you think I'm a good human being? Do you think I'm a bad human being? And ninety nine percent of the time, like they'll give me their honest feedback. Mm-hmm. And I'll be like, okay, do you trust my decision making process, my judgment? Because I consider Savon, I consider Andrew, I consider all these people really good genuine fucking people like yeah. they are awesome individuals they won't they're not yes men they're people who will push back absolutely in such a good and growth way yeah and i'm like have you had any interaction with them no you haven't all right yeah. then i respect your opinion but sometimes it is just bullshit yeah like have you talked about it because most of the time if you're sitting down in your echo chamber and all you hear back is someone else's voice but with your own words you're you you'll thrive in that yeah you'll be in there for as long as you want there's no growth there and then all you got to do is like all you got to do is take a step out and then you feel scared and you're like no no no, i'm gonna come right back in here yeah yeah and absolutely. That, what are you gonna do and not right. talking shit about anyone but for me i'm whenever someone says something like that which i never have had because i yeah. again like i said i respect everyone's view and i will 
people are afraid of arguments yeah and afraid of confrontation that's the only way you you move the the, the pieces forward you you keep the yeah. ball rolling is with in any direction anything <laughs> yeah even in relationships people yep. are like oh i don't want to fight like dude you need to like you need to uh, you need to do this with any relationship you need to have pushback you need to have confrontation because if not then you don't know where you guys stand yeah 100 percent um and if you if you're just talking from an outside and if me and you have a problem yeah and i'm like hey man you want to talk about it and you're like no and i just see you just keep talking crap i'm like all right cool i don't need to worry about it like i'm yeah. just gonna whatever he says it's all good because i know he doesn't want to talk about it i know sure. he doesn't want to have that conversation and it's it sucks because what i said earlier like when i see that he calls me or when yeah. i see like i have interaction with a bunch of all these people I, like it feels really cool yeah. It feels really, really good. And like I said, I've never, I, there's no one has, I, I've never been disrespectful. Don't get that twisted. Like if you disrespect me in a public setting and if you say something, I'm going to come back at you. I'm a Jersey boy. I'm not going to get real. Like, yeah, 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 I'm yeah. not just going to be like, yeah, no. Okay, let's have this conversation. Let's talk about it. If you don't yeah. want to talk about it, like we had an issue where someone at the semis in Orlando this year said something about Paulina. I was like, no. Nah. Like an athlete like, or something? Or? No, no, I wasn't an athlete. Just so, someone buying coffee. They're like, oh, okay. oh this, et cetera, et cetera. She doesn't even know what she's doing. And they didn't realize that I was part of like this this, this group message. And I just called them out. I was like, hey, I'm here. Like, I'm the person that, that, that did it. Show up. Uh, I'll be at the booth tomorrow. Yeah. Show up at this time if you want to talk about it. They show up. up. I was like, all right, cool. They did show up? No, they didn't. They showed up later. <laughs> they showed yeah. up later and it was one of those things where it's like, oh, no, we're good. Like, everything was fine. I was like, oh, okay. That's the energy yeah. that you should have came yeah. with on the group chat yeah that's dude. the energy that you should have been with yeah like yeah. like i don't care who it is like i'm gonna push back if it's about me i can care less if it's about one of the people that helped me out i'm gonna nip it in the bud right right away dude i mean i don't know it might be the upbringing or whatever but a lot of people you get to <clears throat> you get to find out that a lot of people are just bitch made right it's just like talk a lot of lip service there's nothing else it doesn't need to be like throwing hands there doesn't oh, need to be fights never ever, especially at our age like, no, you don't no, need to fight never. people but it's like a lot of people will talk the talk when it comes to being on you know the social media or whatever that's sometimes the thing that i have problem with with a lot of these social media people is like i just wonder if they'll like do it in person too but at the same, I'm talking about Hiller specifically and uh, not Savan, because you, you see him have conversations with everybody. I love Hiller's content, but I was just saying yesterday, I'm like, I feel like sometimes he's burning bridges with like too many people, but I also don't know him as a person. Oh, uh, so I could never kindest say- Kindest human being. Yeah. Oh, kindest dude, human being. I, I, know his, I know his girlfriend, Al. I've met her a few times, but um, I, I could never say like, I don't think that he would do that in person. I just like, I'm waiting for that one video that somebody's just like filming, you know, in the background and they're like, for example, I don't know if this is like a thing, but like if like Tia and him are in the same spot or whatever, if there would be a conversation, like that's something that I would be really interested to see, not to see if he is about what he says he is or she is about what he says he is, just to see if they can actually have that conversation, you know, because there's some drama between them right now, isn't there? Uh, is it, uh, the drama I think is one way. It's just one. Oh, Tia. Okay. Yeah, but but yeah. that doesn't that doesn't go like, and that's okay. Yeah, like that. I think so too. Yeah, like, I think that's perfect. Yeah, I th I think it's so perfect because again, it's like you have now you have the avenue to to have a conversation. Yeah, yeah. And if you want to have it, yeah, it's just gonna like imagine the sit down of them talking. Yeah, it'll just be so cathartic for the community and just yeah. for, for for themselves. And and again, I I think I think uh, I don't think people. I mean, me personally, I don't think that way of of. Of let's say let's use him for example. I don't think of him being the type of person that is an internet guy. Confrontational. He's he's there. Like he'll he'll have the conversation. Yeah. He's he's the type of person that never asks like he asks very open ended questions. Yeah. Yeah. And by the purpose. way, I want to make it really clear, just in case somehow he would, no, <laughs> no, no. in case he would, because if I had an actual problem with him, I would say it. But I don't fucking know the guy, you know. But I want to make it super clear that. I was just using him, him as an example yeah. for like people who are on the internet saying things. If you're gonna say it, like always be willing to have that conversation. By the way, he has with that Bill guy like a couple weeks ago at Crucible. He had the conversation with one of the dudes that he uh, that he made a video about. So I believe 100%. And but how cool was it for Bill to to, to sit down with William him. Leahy, whatever his name is? To, to yeah, yeah. And that's the thing. Like I I I, I hate it when when people are like oh I don't like oh I don't associate. I'm like have you? When's the last time you saw one of his videos? Oh no, I don't like his content. Yeah. Okay, then yeah. let's talk about 
the weather. Because they saw one like seven months ago. Not even then that. They like they I saw a out. comment of a comment of a comment. Yeah. Like, yeah, oh, yeah. okay. Let's not talk about that. Let's talk about something random else. Because it's, right. it's my 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 take on the weather is equally as good as your take on on Hiller's content or Sevon's content or or Brian's content or or right, Lauren's yeah. content or whoever else's content. It's just like, all right, man. Like, are we gonna? Like, is a conversation that we're gonna have be productive? Like, for me, it's like, shit, man. I'm able to talk to you. I'm able to find out we have like the same, the same kind of like background and yeah. like the grind and the hustle and all that good shit. And and it, it it's it's worth the time. Yeah, like, for sure. I, I was telling you earlier. Oh, I appreciate like, that. I didn't want to be on podcasts. Yeah. One because I felt like people didn't like again imposter syndrome. People don't really want to know about me. But yeah. I didn't want to be forward facing. And then Roderick, he was just like, dude, people want to know. Yeah, absolutely. Just like, yeah. Just get get on there and just yeah. talk. Um, and and this hope- is that's that's part of the reason why I want to have these conversations. Like why I started a podcast for like people that like you might be behind a brand and nobody really knows about you or like in, in a lot of instances, it's like people do only short form content now. Right. So you only get bits and pieces of who everyone is. So having a longer form piece of content to kind of tell your story, I feel like opens you up to, to more people. So anyway, sorry, I think I interrupted. No, no, you're good. You're good. And, 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 uh, I mean, we, we kind of go back and we started talking with our hands for whatever reason. (laughs) I don't know if you noticed it. Uh, a lot of a lot of times, I, I hate going and doing the same podcast and talking about the same thing. Yeah. Uh, and I, on purpose, I try to make sure I don't talk about the same thing. Oh, I don't think I, I think we, we touched on some sub- subjects that are the same because you know some people want to know. Yeah. Uh, but I think you know every every podcast is extremely extremely different, and I, wa- I and I don't want to be the same thing over. Yeah. Over and over again. Like I wanna sure. I wanna be able to have this conversation. I wanna be you know able to throw a few curse words around and 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 and, and talk about like. You know that relationship I have with with Sevon and like and all that stuff and and yeah. if if for whatever reason let's say one of my athletes wants to wants to not have a relationship with Paper Street Coffee anymore because they don't agree with some of my views right and and they would have like I don't even know what they would not agree maybe they don't agree with me being being in bed with with Sevon it's like I would love to have a conversation with them and at the end of the day just be like all right cool like we're good like it's business and I don't take anything personal yeah, yeah. that's something that I try to tell a lot of people that that I, I associated with people that help me out it's like don't take anything personal down the road it's going to work out like yeah. down the road it's going to work out for instance if you guys didn't know this motherfucker has messaged me about those cans a while back I did yeah and I had so much shit going on that I think I ghosted the shit out of him you did yeah and we're still here yeah it's one of those things where it's like hey man I'm sorry that I did that but I it just yeah. had so much shit going on that like things fell to the crack and then I, I started getting people that'll be able to do this. Now we're here, yep. not because I was like, yeah, it's because other people were able to kind of filter that stuff. Yeah. And it's never it's never those things about like, oh, uh, you know, oh, he, he burnt me once. That's it. It's over, like the burn bridge. No, 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 no. There's st- people got a bunch of shit going on. Yeah, dude. And if we can cook later on and we can grind and we can work together later on, by all means, that's the time we were supposed to. Because if, yeah. if it's not now, it wasn't, it wasn't. Yeah. It wasn't. Well, yeah, dude, I remember, I remember, uh, you, you gave me your number and I texted you and you said that you had some like personal stuff going on or whatever. Something was happening. I think, right? Was that it? I don't know. Something was happening. And I was just like, ah, fuck it, dude. Something, something's going on. So whatever, who cares? You know, I'm not going to bug the guy. It doesn't matter. I knew that eventually something would probably happen. We'd end up talking, but, um, I want to bring it back a little bit to, you said that you had two gyms. Oh yeah. Okay. So you went from a normal nine to five or fucking five to seven, yeah, whatever yeah, it was. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then you went into the gym space. How did yeah. that happen? CrossFit. Yeah, right. Uh, I remember I started. Oh, so you had boxes? Uh, I worked. I was I was a coach at one box, and then I it was at, I worked at two unaffiliated boxes because I was poor and I couldn't afford the affiliation fee. Yeah. Uh, but I worked. I, I the two bo- the two gyms that I owned were just like a functional fitness, but I coached cool. the whole time at a at a uh, at a box. Uh, so I got my level one in 2015, uh, and it's one of those things where I started like for competition, and then I went to the level one, and like my life completely changed it was like helping people like all this stuff like yeah. being being such a good person and then the first gym that i was that i was at uh crossfit aquatic it was such a really cool awesome community what was it called? crossfit aquatic in new jersey okay uh it's i don't think it's around anymore uh i met awesome people there awesome coaches um and then i i that helped me uh create my own community uh and and and, and go from an introvert yeah in 2015 so like oh shit now I'm coaching now I'm talking in front of 
you know, 20 people every hour, you yeah. know, for an extended period of time. So now I got to be like more talkative. Yeah. And, 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 and I miss coaching. Oh, man. Yeah. Do I mean, will I ever go back? No. Uh, <laughs> but I miss it. I miss it so It's a grind, so dude. Much, That's a man. real grind. I, I used to, I, I loved it. I, I, got, I had it down to a perfection yeah. where uh, I would, I would, I would seek, like, I'd love dropping in at other boxes when I travel just because, like, I want to see, like, how, how the coach would do the warm up and how this would happen. And I, I started kind of changing a lot of the way that I did my, my, my own regular warm ups and stuff like that to incorporate more of like this, more of the community aspect. Not just, I hate, I hate when like you're, you're at a box and then you see the coach just like, yeah, yeah, this Dude. is the workout. This is the workout, et cetera, yeah. et cetera. Dog, I, I get so angry, yeah. so, so angry or where there's just like, or yeah. they're like, yeah, yeah, just, yeah. One, two reps. It's like, I, I, I hate ah, dude, when they're not queuing, they're not like active in the class. Yeah. That's the worst. Every single time you see someone's body move yeah, is an opportunity, one for you to appreciate. And even if it's maybe the cue could be something that's affirming. Yeah. Yeah, which yeah. is very very important uh, because what if you're 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 looking at, at an athlete that's perfect right yeah. like there's nothing wrong with like all right cool like awesome you're, you're doing a good job like have the cue be something affirming but most of the time in in, in, in the box right that's not the case right and, and I hate when I see like coaches sitting down I see coaches just like staring off they look like, tired be present yeah be present and and and, and uh, again like you know I'm speaking super anecdotally like for me I started off like that and I had to drastically drastically switched by the time i was at my second box which is my personal one without without uh any partners like i was a personality yeah i was a personality i wasn't like the 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 regular i was fucking going in there <laughs> i was quiet up until the class started yeah. i always used to just like sit saving your energy because the second the class started I was like all right mother f like you know just yeah. just hyping everyone up almost like almost like it was like almost like a spin class energy but just making yeah. sure that like i can i can bring energy to cues on the deadlift to making yep. someone make sure that they do a perfect back swap perfect wall ball all this stuff i can make all that exciting and very entertaining class after class after class after class and yeah it just sucks i i'll say it because like it is what it is there's a box by where i work where i live that's five minutes away i don't go to okay because i just it's just it's the just, energy's bad it's just it, it, the workout the energy everything sucks i literally go to an to another box that's 45 minutes away just because it's wow it's it's i'm like oh no this is good because it's worth it yeah same thing i uh, jujitsu yeah. th there's a a, a jujitsu uh, studio Five minutes, like I can walk to it in five minutes from my house. I'm like, nope, I'm okay. I'm gonna drive 45 minutes to this place that I know is perfection. Yeah. Because when I went there, I learned so much, so much in like a week versus yep. being there for months. So it's like, it's again, like you take pride in your work, you do your thing, and it's like, you, you, yeah, you'll, yeah. Well, yeah. dude, with gyms, coaches are what actually make the gym. If like 100%. people, people most times sign up for the coach, yep. not for the gym. Like and and the culture, by the way, too, right? Yeah. So like, I've had my retention rate for like my clients because I work with a lot of athletes trying to go D one or whatever, right? My retention. I try to explain this to other people who like come to me for advice. Is I usually have people from anywhere between five to seven years. There's like no drop off under that, and that's a really long time when you're dealing with kids all the way up until college, and then they stay through college. And the reason is, is not so much for the gym and the equipment that I have because my gym almost looks like a box. And the last gym that I rented from before I opened mine was a warehouse space. We didn't have fancy equipment. We had barbells, dumbbells, you know, some plywood boxes, whatever. Um, but it's because they bought into me. And because when, you, when you're passionate about what you do and you bring that energy, people buy into that and they fucking believe in you. As opposed to the gyms that might have all the nicest shit, but their trainers, like you said, are like, Dealing on their phones and not they don't give a shit about you they're just getting their paycheck collecting it and getting the fuck out of there it's and again like you, sometimes you need that sometimes there's like it, it sucks right it the 100 percent sucks and and you know a good gym when 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 you when you don't see that yeah and again like I, i'll tell you firsthand like i have the means mm -hmm to be able to wake up whenever I want to wake up and drive 45 minutes one way, drive 45 minutes the other way. I have the means to do that. Yeah. Not everyone does because like, you know, a gym costs a membership, a, a, a membership to, to a jiu-jitsu gym. It's costly. Expensive. Yeah, it's pricey. Um, and on top of that, add the gas and all that stuff. And it's, and it's like, again, I have the means to do that. Not everyone does. And it sucks because maybe they'll be, you know, in CrossFit for a few months. And then after yeah. that, like they're gone. 
Yeah. And and it's like shit. Now they now they think every gym is like that. Right. But they don't realize that like you go maybe even 15 minutes down the road and it's completely different. Yeah. Totally. And and, and you know like there's problem the people think of like oh there's a problem with oversaturations of the gyms it's like no 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 there's it, it, like it, it's crossfit xyz crossfit you know booth yeah. a crossfit booth b but they're very very different yeah. on purpose you can have two gyms next to each other and they're going to be very very different we're opening up a brick and mortar down in jersey and there's so you're going to have like an actual spot yeah, yeah it's opening oh, up in 2 weeks um and 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 there's coffee shops right next to each other and nice. i'm like well what's going to happen is i'm either going to they're either going to help us, uh, we're going to help each other, or I'm going to, like, I, I don't want them, I don't want to cannibalize them, but I, 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 I know the quality of my stuff is paramount, is really, really good. Hell yeah, dude. That's awesome. All right, Gabe. So then on that, how do you go from owning a box and then making CrossFit's best tasting coffee? Uh, Have you always been into coffee? Was it a hobby at first? What's the deal? Oh, dude, like, I, I fucking love coffee. Coffee's amazing. So uh, um, my fiance's uh, uncle from Colombia, he used to send us like really, really awesome, awesome coffee from Colombia, obviously. Yeah. And uh, I had this awesome coffee at home, like super cool coffee like that. I, I, I would go crazy. Do it in my V60 and my Chemex, my French press. I'm a nerd when it comes to, to anything, like anything yeah. that I'm passionate about, super nerd out. Uh, and then again, Pandemic happens. I'm like, I have amazing coffee. People are stuck at home. Put them together. Let's yeah, just yeah. make it happen. And then, and then it's just one of those things where, like, uh, you know, I live in, I live close to the city. During the pandemic, uh, you were able to go in and out of the city like, like that, like, like something a, a drive that would be like 30 miles an hour went like 30 miles like 15 minutes just because yeah. there was no cars so uh, i found this place that that uh teaches you how to roast teaches you everything um out of brooklyn Dope. so i hit them up they were like all right swing by and and uh it was one of those things where they just started as the pandemic happened so like they were bringing on clients and like the co the barrier to entry was very very low it was not that expensive and now it's a shit ton of money just because it's exploded right but i just rode the wave at the right time damn started with them at the right time and like everything just so happened to like coffee was super cheap it yeah. was just like perfect 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 and then and and then it's just like you do the work and then the luck just somehow right because when you work really really hard luck is everywhere right yeah um it just started coming it just started coming and and and, and like i said i went from like a year from 2021 to 2022 of like one or two sales online yeah like a month yeah and then you know, after partnering with Sevy, after partnering with a bunch of athletes, uh, uh, Ariel was my first athlete. Then I went to uh, like saying Colton, Christine, Colin Brander, Jared Stevens, uh, Kyra Milligan, uh, Alexis Raptis, uh, Sydney Wells. Uh, I think I need more guy athletes. Dude, you got a you. lot of people. I didn't even realize that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I, uh, we have a lot. We have a lot more. We have Devin Kim. Uh, um, I actually well I forgot how to say your last name I'm sorry Ashley uh, like we, we do have a lot of people um, and it's just like awesome people that like yeah. want to help and support support us and, and, and grow forward like we're uh, we're exper experimenting with like going into esports this is a, a esports yeah it's an nah. esports hat that I have on who is uh, it this is a space station gaming okay uh, they're huge, so yeah. we're experimenting and like branching off into esports as well. Oh. Uh, you know, different market. You're uh, gonna you're gonna compete with G Fuel. Well, we're different. One of the things, right? It's like you look at their cans and they'll be like, natural ingredients, natural flavors, yeah. no, you know, all this stuff. And, and like sucralose in it. <laughs> I look at my can. I'm like, I got three ingredients. I got filtered water, organic coffee, nitrogen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Done. That's it. Yeah. Like that's it. Like because after you take those, like uh, you. Crash. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Hard. Yeah. You take this. You're like, all right, cool. It's coffee. I'm good. I'm chilling. Yeah. So like that's you know that and especially like you know people might like look down upon it about upon esports, but like they're making bread. They're doing Dude, their thing. What the fuck? No, it's a it's an ever growing like uh, thing. So no, dude. Yeah. That's I think that's amazing that you're getting into that. How um how do you come up with the name Paper Street? Uh, so again, like growing up, right? Like we all saw Fight Club. I, I read I read the uh the book by Chuck Palahniuk and then uh, the first uh, graphic novel afterwards is good then the other graphic novels are bad please don't read them don't do that <laughs> to yourself yeah um, but it's one of those things where we started right during the pandemic right so like 
you know, I don't care what your leaning is, but like just being stuck at home, like yeah. not even being able to like see like let's say your parents, your grandparents, your loved ones. It's one tough. of those things where you're like, I I, I want things to change. Mm -hmm. You know how it changed, whether it's whatever, whatever you don't know. Uh, you just wanted it to change. Mm -hmm. So uh, and that's what that's what uh, Fight Club is right the anti-establishment anti-conformity the counterculture super counterculture <laughs> yeah. and then you have and for me i'm a super i love music i'm super into indie alternative music i i'm a nerd favorite Again, band uh, my favorite band radiohead easily nice um and and they have at the end of the movie where you have edward norton's character is there with with uh with marla right and they're looking at the cityscape yeah. And then all the buildings are collapsing where he like he won, right? Quote unquote. Yeah. He won. Yeah. Tyler's dead. But no, you didn't. Like you're, you're you're like the 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 idea behind the thought behind the whole uh disrupting this like system yeah. still went through. Even though you think you took down one of the heads, it's like Hydra. Like there's more heads there. So like you see the Pixies are playing in the background, another one of my favorite bands. Yeah. And then you just see the city like in 29 in, in 2009 uh, 2000 no 1999 when the movie came out, you're like a little kid, a nine year old kid. I'm like, what the fuck is this? Yeah. But it just like was so like entrancing and I was like, holy crap. Yeah. And that that always was 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 my 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 idea uh about that that counterculture stuff. Yeah. And then when you're stuck in that time where people are just like, yo, I, I just, I, I don't want to do this anymore, but I really can't. Mm -hmm. And like, I, I, I have to go for a run, like, but it has to be quick and like, no one can see me or like, if they see me, I might get in trouble. Like, I wanted, I wanted the sentiment to, to be that. That's why my first, my first roast are Tyler, Marla, and the narrator. Okay. Um, like the, our, our tagline is, uh, is, uh, uh, enjoy your journey, right? Because it's yeah. your journey. Come on in. Yeah, go through. Order coffee. You're we, good. Did, we did this on purpose. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, P dog. That's probably in a P dog. <laughs> uh, so so yeah. So that's where where we got Paper Street Coffee from. That's dope. Um, and then now we're just growing. Like our, our uh, you know, like I said, I'm a huge nerd. My my first line of coffee, the narrator, uh, Stella, and Mar I mean narrator Marla and 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 Tyler are all Fight Club characters. My second line, all music uh, yeah. references, Renegade, uh, Stella, and the Eraser. Um, nice. My T Frost. Uh, Frost is is Robert Frost. Uh, American poet and, and writer, so okay. all that. My my next line of teas that are coming out: uh, pink robots, um, uh, pink robots, Kai. That's all Japanese. You say and tea? Yeah, T T T. Nice. Yeah. Okay. Japanese. Sweet. Uh, are you an anime? Tea. Oh, I'm a huge anime nerd. Anime guy. Uh, so so we have Kai, uh, Pink Robots, uh, Bluebird, and Scar. Okay. Uh, if you figure out all the references. I'll give you free free tea whenever you you, you <laughs> let me know the references. Yeah. You got to be spot on and yeah. and and yeah. So like that that came out of like anime culture. Yeah. Um, and my next set of my next project is gonna be is gonna be again music. So it, it's one of those things where every, all of my coffees like there's yeah there's there's subtle hints. It's I not like, just paper street. It's not just paper. It's like there's subtle yeah. hints on the. Bunch I love of that things. dude. You're like you're putting culture into. Oh dude, the I love art. Too. Like I'm yeah. a, I'm a fuck. I, I'm a drummer. I yeah. love like I love. I love being creative, so that's like, dope, dude. I'm able to, to 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 show some of my creativity through like something as dumb as naming my coffees. No, dude, that's that's really cool. That's not dumb. Don't say that. That's <laughs> awesome, bro. I love that. Well, you know, I really wanted to ask you about how you get into the CrossFit space, but I really like where that just went. I think we should end it there for the next what one. What do you think? Yeah, yeah for the no, next I'm, one. Whatever. Let's run it back again. Hell yeah. Let's make it cool, happen. man. Well, hey, I really, really appreciate your time, dog. Oh, man. Love it. Um, I got three questions that I ask everybody at the end. So, the first one is, and you might not have it, you might have it, you probably do. What is your biggest goal for the next upcoming year with the brand, the company? Oh, super. Uh, I, I just want to open up more, more coffee shops. And uh, honestly, I want to be able to uh, grow my team. Nice. Real quick, how, how important do you think brick and mortar is? Not important. Not? No, no, not important. This is a, uh, it's a passion project for me. Okay. Yeah. So cool. Not, not at all. Got it. I personally, for like some things, I think brick and mortar is really important. And then other things I'm like, why are you doing it? You know, yeah. for a coffee shop, dude, one of my dreams when I'm older and just a multimillionaire is to just have like a coffee shop that I'm doing like the press in, I'm doing everything. And I just read a book in the back corner. Yep. And I'm just chilling. That, you know? That's 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 the goal. That's why I want to open the coffee shop because I want to be able to work. I want to be able to play. Yeah. Play in there. When is it opening? Hopefully November 11th. This this year? Yeah, like in two three weeks. No way. Yeah. 
Where is it? Jersey? New Jersey. Yep. Oh, Cresco, New Jersey. Dude. Ah, we might have to just try to get out there. Dude. Let's do it. There's a competition that weekend that I was going to do, but I'm not going to do it anymore because I'm stressed. Okay. All right. Well, <laughs> hopefully that stress comes off you, dude. Let it, yeah. I'll ask you about it more um, when we're done. Um, and then what are you willing to sacrifice to achieve the goal? Uh... A lot, but nothing, nothing that, uh, so, so time, I'm willing to sacrifice time. time. Yeah. Uh, but, and that's paramount, but again, I need to make sure that everyone around me is happy. My family, yeah. uh, my fiance, uh, and I'm not going to like, I'm like right now I'm feeling a little bit under the weather, Yeah. Uh, but I'll sacrifice things to an extent, but the team around me knows, Hey, you're sacrificing too much. Yeah. Uh, so, so I'm I'm super like relaxed, and I know I I can push it. Yeah. And then I'll have people around me to say, Hey, don't push it. Like you again, good my, people to keep you. In yeah. Stack. My fiance is is the number one. They'll be like, Hey, you're either going too too fast. You need to slow down. Yeah. Or she'll be like, Hey, book it. Let's go. Yeah. So then, what are you not willing to sacrifice to achieve the goal? Uh, relationships. Yeah. 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 Relationships. I. Yeah, if someone were to be like, "Hey, here's a billion dollars, but you gotta get rid of Sevi," I'd be like, "I appreciate it, man. You're, we're not supposed to be together. We're not yeah. supposed to. Be, we're not supposed to work." Or like, if someone's like, "Hey, you gotta, you gotta rock out with me, not with them," I'd be like, "Hey, man, that's not, that's not my style. Like, yeah. we're, we're not. This isn't meant to be. Like, no offense. You want to rock out later on? Let's, let's, let's do it. Let's hustle. Yeah. But for right now, like, I'm not willing to sacrifice like." that stuff like don't don't give me don't make me choose yeah that lights me up dude so you guys fuck with paper street coffee they got a good moral compass um dude i appreciate your time man i really do yeah Brother. absolutely so for all you guys hit up paper street coffee what's roderick's code rolo lolo rolo r-o-l-o use code rolo get your uh what's the percentage I think he has 10% off. 10% off, dude. And then go follow them on Instagram. Follow us. Hit that subscribe button. Thank you guys so much for watching. Appreciate Gabe. And uh, we'll see y'all in the next one. Thanks, dude. Deuces.